a crazy thing, right? So a couple of months ago, I don't even know, it could have been, even been a year, but this blew up in the nursing community, right? Um, the nurses about playing cards and, <laughs> and, 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 and everyone, everyone and their mother was upset. Everyone and their mother, like, and I Don't am call the guy. Nurses. Don't call I, for nurses. Right? I, I am the guy that um, tries to do videos on all the hot topics that, that come mm-hmm. out. Of, like, I like to speak and, like, at least have my voice heard on these things. But I didn't say not, nothing. Team, uh, I, I, Adrian. So you know working night shift. I don't want to say there's downtime, but there's time where not Here's the thing. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be totally honest with you. Sometimes, not often, depends yes. on where you work. Sometimes the hardest part is working against your body's natural rhythms and staying awake. You might have a chill night, but then you've gotta be alert. You can't be like Exactly. At the nurse's station. So you're like focused, alert, charting, making sure people are okay. Cause you could be like dozing off, playing cards at the nurse's station, and suddenly there's a fucking code. Exactly. And you're on it. You're up. You're active. So I'm not going to lie. Sometimes we have nights where I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so bored. And then, of course, everybody's like, don't say that. <laughs> right? Shh. You can never say it's quiet. Don't, <laughs> don't, no. But, but also, like, some, some day shifters on those nights that are like unicorn nights where everybody's cool, everybody's asleep, everybody's comfortable, your patients are good, the alarms aren't going off very much. And some people are like, how the hell do you guys do this? Like, I mean, people are like doing stairs and like walking laps on the unit because they're like, I am going to fall asleep. Right. Sometimes that's the hardest part. But for some people, that's a deal breaker. Exactly. exactly. I mean, I, so it, it's, it's different for everyone. But most of the time, most of the time, the great majority of the time on my unit, you don't have nights like that. You have nights where you are short staff you don't have like we my unit we don't have licensed practitioners that we're we're a step down unit so we have patients that sometimes are like a hair away from going to the icu like they could be in the icu but we can manage them we take vented patients like we do all sorts of intense shit take vented patients a trach to vent we don't do et tubes we do a trach to vent and sometimes they're fresh trachs we take patients that are three days out from a full lung transplant like we take sick patients i'm praying for you adrian i'm praying for you (laughs) I, I, I do want to say this because I haven't really had any other opportunity to talk about this. I had my first rapid response as a nurse the last time I worked. I've been a nurse three years. I said I've never seen it. We've had plenty of codes on my unit. I've never been present for one. Knock, knock on a lot of wood. Um, I've not been present, but I had my first rapid response. And it was terrifying because in my head, I was like, as this, pa- it was a patient that had um, respiratory issues. They had a lot of secretions. We were doing nasal pharyngeal suctioning, getting loads of crap out. Couldn't keep the guy's saturations up. So we get to a point where we're suctioning we're suctioning we're adding to the oxygen he's already on like 60 50 60 percent oxygen he's only satting in the 70s and in my head i'm going oh should i call the rapid response should i do it should i do i need it should i just call the doctor and i don't know about other hospitals like our rapid response is like the team that you call when you need more hands on deck shit's not you're not at code emergency yet but like you're getting there fast. Going off the, you yeah, need no, we someone have to this. respond. They said, yeah, they send like the ICU. They send a doctor. They usually send, um, you know, the like the, the nurse therapist provider, or... RT. Yeah, we we're fortunate. We have RT on our unit twenty. Oh yeah, because you're pulmonary. Yeah, so we yeah. we couldn't. Oh my god, the breathing treatments alone would take us all fucking night. Yeah. Um, so we're lucky to have RT. But in that case, I was like, do I do it? Do I do it? Should I do it? Am I going to get in trouble if I do it? And I was like, fuck it. This patient's only satting 70% and right. we're bagging him on 100% oxygen. Fucking call. If they get mad at you, oh well. If it if the pa- and you know what, by the time the team showed up, I think we had knocked a mucus plug loose with like the intensive air force of the bagging. Um, the patient was fine. We were able to clear some secretions by the time the team arrived. He was sat in 100% and he was back on his original like 40 or 30 or 40% oxygen, which is still a lot because he's still really sick. Of course. He's in but the, the team, But the team said to me when that – I was terrified. I was like, oh, my God, I hope this was justified. Like, I hope this was okay. The team thanked me. They said he's done this before. And it was way more of an emergency last time this happened. Like, I don't mean he's done this like he did it. But, like, his condition has yes. manifested this way before. They were like, you did the right thing. You caught it earlier this time. Now we don't have to worry about intubating him because he was intubated at one point for this same thing. So the doctors, thank God, they weren't jerks about it. They're not like, oh, 
he's fine. Let's go. <laughs> they were like, thank you for calling. Thank you for recognizing that this shit could have gone sour real quick. Oh, yeah. And that, and that, um, harken back to something that one of the nurses I interviewed, she's an ICU nurse, she said, because I, I asked her the question, how do you develop the balls to speak up when you know something needs to be done? And she basically, her short, the short version of her answer was, once you speak up a couple times and you're right, that fuels your fire to want to go to bat for your patients. And you know what? If you're wrong, <clears throat> woo, you were wrong. Suck it up. Someone's not dead. Right. Like you are not being wrong. You're being wrong is less of a consequence. Deal with it. If they get pissed off, like, ah, oh, this was totally fine. It's life. Move on. Use your, use yeah. the services you have available <laughs> to you. You're not, you're not going to ever lose your license for calling a rapper that's no. wrong. For calling a code blue no. that's wrong. You might lose your license if you don't call. Hell you yeah. might lose your license if you don't call for help. So, yeah, and you, in I would when be doubt, wrong all just, day. Should I? I feel like I should do it. Maybe I should do it. Should I do it? I was, like, seeking permission because I'd never done it before. I was like, no, I call the shots for my patients. If I think, feel uh, if the hair on the back of my neck is standing up, I now know that I can listen to that. So, um, yeah, that's that's a good thing for newbies to hear. Like, even as a student, if you see a nurse that's about to do something super fucked up and you don't speak up. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Like, you, if have, you're you wrong, have to say something. If you're, if you're a wrong, mandatory you're reporter. I, it comes with the job. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I just want to empower people to be like, if that's what you think you should do, do it. 